Welcome, dear friends, to this third Sunday in Lent. Uh, I do pray that you will all be blessed as we share in this time with God together. Looking at the parish in this coming week, the birthdays are as follows. Today on March the 7th, Lindiwe Kosa. March the 11th, Anna Del Rimple. March the 18th, Devin Whitfield. March the 19th, Jackie Robson and March the 20th, Anthony Dalrymple. We do wish you all a truly blessed celebration of your birthdays and that the year ahead will be filled with God's abundant blessings. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbour. Most Holy and Merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault, in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the selfishness, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. Hear our confession, O Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Hear our confession, O Lord our apathy and indifference, and our acceptance of oppression. Hear our confession, O Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Hear our confession, O Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, O Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favourably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, Bring us with all your saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray together the Collect for the third Sunday in Lent. God of passion and power, your Son drove the money changers out of the temple. Cleanse us of our arrogance and recreate in us a dwelling for your holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading comes from Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. The Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven, above, or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold any guiltless who misuse his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, 
but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land your Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbour, you shall not covet your neighbour's house, you shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 19 The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day tells it to another, and night to night communicates knowledge. There is no speech or language, nor are their voices heard. Yet their sound has gone out through all the world, and their words to the ends of the earth. There he has pitched a tent for the sun, which comes out as a bridegroom from his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run his course. Its rising is at one end of the heavens, and its circuit to the farthest bound and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The command of the Lord is true, and makes wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are unchanging and righteous every one. Much to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, than the honey that drips from the comb. Moreover, by them your servant is taught, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can know his own unwitting sins, or cleanse me from my secret faults? Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get the mastery over me. So I shall be clean and innocent of great offense. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning's second reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, reading from verses 18 to 25. Christ the wisdom and power of God. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom to God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news declared in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. 
When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found men selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. Those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, What miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he had raised from the dead, the disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the Gospel of Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I'd like to start today by running a little experiment. Listen to these two statements. If I said, you will read the whole Bible, how would you interpret that? Now, if I said, you will read the whole Bible, how would you interpret that? Let's do this in another way. Okay, so scenario one. A mother's working with her child. The child is struggling with maths and fearful for the upcoming test. The mother says, you will not fail your maths test. How would you interpret those words? Scenario two. A coach is talking to a star rugby player. The young boy struggles with maths and is on the verge of being disqualified from the big match because of his grades. The coach says, you will not fail this maths test. How would you interpret those words? These are the exact same words, but the inflection of the words and the story that surrounds the words dramatically changes how the words are interpreted. Now, trying to preach on the Ten Commandments in a sermon, which, for your comfort, should only be around ten minutes, would mean a commandment a minute. Well, at least I would have got this maths equation correct, correct in a maths test. So anyway, today we are only going to look at the first section of the commandments that have to do with loving God, which are found in Exodus 20 verses 1 to 11. This is often called the first table of the law. But before we look closely at those, I need to say one more word about words. There's something really interesting about the Ten Commandments. The word commandment never appears in them. In fact, the Jews never called them the Ten Commandments. Look at Exodus 20 verse 1 again. It says that God spoke these words. That's it words. The Hebrew word is debar, and it can be translated as word or promise. These, in fact, are ten words. I want to give you four words to help us understand these ten words. So the first is words of promise, the tone of the law. These are less words of commandment, and more words of agreement and covenant and a vision of a future that the people will become. This is God's dream for God's people. Let's go back to the opening experiment. If you believe that God is a God who seeks to set boundaries so that people who violate the boundaries can be punished, then you could easily read the words like this. You will not have any other gods before me. You will not take my name in vain. You will keep the Sabbath day holy. But if you believe that God is a loving parent who seeks to create life and health for all of creation, then you could easily read these in the tone of a promise and a vision for what God's children will become. 
you will have no other gods. You will not speak my name in vain, but accurately represent my nature to all people. You will rest and be in healthy community. That's what this family is all about. That leads to our second word. Words of freedom, the purpose of the law. According to the Jewish tradition, the first commandment, actually the first word, is cited to be God's self-description. I am the Lord who brought you out of slavery. God's mission in the world is to give life, is to give life and freedom to creation, to set us free from the bondage of sin that keeps us bogged down in fear and violence. Let me ask you a question. For those of you who got in the car to drive here today, what was going through your mind? You may have been thinking about all the things you have to do later today. You may have been singing along with your favorite song on the radio. You may even have been praying that the sermon wasn't lame. And for those who are doing this, I'm really sorry if your prayer wasn't answered. My guess though is that you were not thinking about whether you would make it here in one piece. Why? Because people follow the rules of the road. Well, mostly anyway. So you would have just expected to have got here in one piece. Of course, getting in a car accident does happen. But it's the exception, not the rule. Laws are given to create freedom, not fear and restriction. I believe that that is the tone with, with, with which we should read these ten words. God sets us free so that we can be free to love God and love others. The Apostle Paul echoes this in his letter to the Galatians, um, chapter 5, verses 1. He says, we have been set free, not so that we can do whatever we want, but so we can walk in the Spirit of God. That leads to our third word, words of perspective, the focus of the law. All the ancient cultures had a theology in which the major forces of nature were thought to be the gods. The sun, moon, stars, water, air, fire, death, etc. Humans knew that these forces impacted their lives and they therefore worshipped them. People generally took two approaches to the gods. One that felt powerless in light of the gods' whims and had no control of their destiny. They worshipped the gods to beg for mercy. And the other approach, they felt that the gods could be manipulated through proper incantations. In both cases, it was a matter of power and control. The god who brought the Israelites out of slavery dreamed a vision for the people and said, You will have no other gods before me. You are not at the mercy of a bunch of powers that battle against each other. I am the one God who loves you and sets you free. Stay focused on me and I will be with you. The gods in our world are the same as the ones in Egypt, but are very different in appearance. Today we believe that the powers that rule the universe are money and politics, and that each one of us are either in control of our own destiny, or at the mercy of the powers that rule our lives. The ten words remind us today that God is not an impersonal force, but a loving God who sets us free in order for us to truly learn to love our neighbor. We have to realize that we are not the center of the universe. I think this is what Jesus meant when he said, Remain in me, and I will remain in you, and you will bear much fruit. And also when God said, when he said to the Father, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. It's really a matter of focus. When we realize that this is God's story, and we are part of God's, that we can take our eyes off our own self-protection and have the ability to love our neighbor. If we don't keep this focus, then quite literally, all hell breaks loose. That's what it's talking about when it says God is a jealous God and the sins of the parents are visited on the next generations. God is described as jealous God. It seems a little weird, doesn't it? Isn't being jealous wrong? There is a difference between jealousy and envy. Envy is what you want when you want someone what someone else has. That's like coveting. 
and that is harmful. Jealousy is when you don't want other people to have what you have. This is not always wrong. I'm a mom, and when I think about my kids, I don't want to share my kids with drugs. I don't want to share my kids with violence. I don't want my kids to become enslaved in sex trafficking. I am jealous of my children. Is that wrong? Of course not. That is what God wants for us. What happens when parents don't honor God? Their children don't learn about God's love and don't know that they were created for freedom. Then the children grow up, so sorry, then they grow up and raise their children without the love of God and so on, until a whole generation doesn't know the love of God and they live in fear of each other and fight and go to war, which leads to famine, poverty, disease and death. We have been set free to love God and love our neighbor. That leads us to the fourth word. Words of community, the scope of the law. The next two words say, don't use my name in vain and keep the Sabbath holy. Does this mean um, don't swear and we must go to church every Sunday? I don't think so. These are good rules to follow, although at this stage quite difficult during this pandemic. But I don't think it's the full intent of these words. Notice what is supposed to happen on the Sabbath. Everybody gets to rest your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. But when we don't put God first, when we use the Lord's name in vain, it affects our children and breeds selfish, fearful, hateful people who create a hierarchy of power and abuse and people lower than them on the food chain. The Sabbath day is a great equalizer in which everyone gets to rest. The Sabbath day is the ultimate picture of God's promised and preferred future. God created life so that we could live together in harmony and peace and enjoy his amazing creation. These words of God are words of promise, of freedom, of perspective and of community. When Jesus was asked what the greatest of the commandments was, he went to the two groupings of commandments in the ten words. He took all the shall nots and turned them into positive statements that covered it all. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. And the second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He said that all other laws derive from those two. So if you keep these two foremost in your minds, you will be okay. Shalom. As we continue our Lenten pilgrimage, preparing for the joyful celebration of Easter, let us return with all our hearts to the God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Let us pray. God of renewal, remember our church, especially Dan, our bishop, Tabu, our archbishop, those who shepherd your people, those ordained to serve, those called to leadership, and all your faithful people. For this, remember your mercy, Lord. Take us as we are and make us your faithful people. God of forgiveness, remember people and countries everywhere, communities and na nations threatened by violence and terror, cities devastated by war, peoples plagued with hunger and afflicted by diseases, and our own blessed land. For this remember your mercy, Lord. Take us as we are and make us your faithful people. God of rest, remember your people. Those overburdened, overburdened by cares, those imprisoned by fear, and those who have lost their way to you. For this remember your mercy, Lord. Take us as we are and make us your faithful people. God of salvation, remember our parish, those who teach and those who learn, 
those who lead our worship and song, those elected to make decisions for your glory and our common good, those who minister to the sick and broken, those who feed the hungry, those who pray for those in need. For this, remember your mercy, Lord. Take us as we are and make us your faithful people. God of wisdom and grace, remember us on our Lenten pilgrimage, those who long to know you, those who hunger for the bread of life, those who thirst for your cup of salvation, those preparing for baptism and confirmants as they prepare to make an adult profession of faith. For this, remember your mercy, Lord. Take us as we are and make us your faithful people. God of resurrection, remember those who have died, especially those whom we love still but see no longer. For this, remember your mercy, Lord. Take us as we are and make us your faithful people. O oh God, have a heaven for the weary and home for the lost. In your great mercy, sustain us with your grace, that walking with Jesus Christ our Lord, we will find our way home. Almighty and holy God, your Son, in obedience to the Spirit, fasted forty days in the desert. Give us grace to discipline ourselves, that we may press on towards Easter with eager faith and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. The great shepherd, the rock of all ages, Almighty God is He. Bow down before Him, love and adore Him. His name is wonderful. You are all invited now to join in the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, maker of light and darkness. Your wisdom draws beauty from chaos, brings a harvest out of sorrow, calls out to those who have lost their way, and leads them safely home. 
God of grace and glory, you made us, you seek and find us, we are your own. In Christ your Son, enemies are reconciled, debts forgiven, and strangers are made welcome. Your Spirit frees us to live as sons and daughters, secure in your family. We who by Christ's power seek to follow the way of the cross, sharing the joy of Christ's obedience, now offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving are yours, most loving and gracious God, for Jesus Christ in whom the world is reconciled. He is the Lamb of God who takes away our sin and gathers us into the abundant new life of your forgiveness. Lifted on the cross, his suffering and forgiveness span the gulf our sins had made. Through Christ's dark struggle, death is shadowed in victory. Christ the firstborn freely offered himself as the Passover lamb for the sins of the whole world. By his loving sacrifice, he inaugurates the reign of eternal light and abundant life. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. Before he was given up to suffering and death, at a meal recalling the night of Israel's Passover release, Jesus took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you, do this to remember me. After supper he took the cup, again he offered you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that all sin may be forgiven. Do this to remember me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall Christ's passion and death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection. We look for the coming of Christ's kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts. With them we offer ourselves a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the bread and wine we offer, that, overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son. By your grace, open our ears to hear you calling us home. Arouse in our hearts the desire to, to return to you, and kindle within us the fire of your love that renews us for the service of Christ's kingdom. Help us to live and work to your praise and glory. Make us grow together in unity and love until at last your creation is renewed and restored. Then bring us with Mary, the mother of our Lord, and all the hosts of heaven to our true eternal home where we may praise you forever. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against you. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Come to this table, not because we must, but because we may. Not to testify that we are righteous, but that we sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Not because we are strong, but because we need strength. Not because we have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in our frailty and sin, we stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and help. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ broken for us. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. As you have fed us in this sacrament, so give us thankful hearts to receive the grace of this Holy Communion and eager wills to follow in Christ's blessed footsteps. In his tender mercy's sake. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa. Protect our children. Transform our leaders. Heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. May Christ our Lord give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, 
to take up your cross and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So let us go forth into the world following the path of Christ. In the name of Christ. Amen. Colors of day dawn into the mind. The sun has come up. The night is behind. Go down in the city, into the street, and let's give the message to the people we meet. So light up the fire and let the flame burn. Open the door, let Jesus return. Take seeds of his spirit, let his fruit grow. Tell the people of Jesus, let his love shines on it never goes down the light of the world is risen again the people of darkness are needing a friend so light up the fire and let the flame burn open the door let jesus return take seeds of his spirit let his fruit grow tell the people of jesus let his love show Open your eyes, look into the sky The darkness has come, the sun came to die The evening draws on, the sun disappears But Jesus is living, his spirit is near So light up the fire and let the flame burn Open the door, let Jesus return Take seeds of His Spirit, let His fruit grow Tell the people of Jesus, let His love show So light up the fire and let the flame burn Open the door, let Jesus return Take seeds of His Spirit, let His fruit grow Tell the people of Jesus that his love shone.